Hello and welcome back to Solo Board Gaming Presents Commands and Colours Napoleonics and we're going to replay the combat at air. Now this took place across the Pyrenees towards the very end of the Peninsula War but we've now crossed the Pyrenees into France and the orientation of the battlefield as you can see here the north is here so this is north to south obviously west to east. Wellington has dispatched a force under Hill, over half of which are made of Portuguese troops, to try and catch up with Marshal Sue, interrupting his retreat. The French are gonna fight a rearguard action, probably ensconced along this ridge here. Meanwhile, the Allied army under General Hill, has arrived on the scene. Let's take a quick look at those forces before we set up their opponent's rearguard action. Well, first of all, on the Allied left, we have the British here under Stuart. There's the figure of Stuart on his mount there. This is quite a powerful force. And if you just follow me around, I'll explain what we have. It's made of mainly line infantry. So we have one, two, three, and over here, a fourth line infantry regiment, all consisting of four blocks each. Notice just here towards the left flank, we have a light infantry regiment consisting of five blocks. By this point in the P Peninsula War, the tactics and development of the light infantry force had developed to such a stage they were now an essential part of the British Army and of Wellington's lines. And finally, to finish off this force, we have a battery here of horse artillery. Let's have a look towards the centre and the first part of the Portuguese component, which is going to Look at that, which is going to compose the majority of the Allied army. Some great Portuguese troops here that have crossed the Pyrenees into France with Wellington. And again, we have line infantry here and here and here. This is line infantry. This regiment accompanied, in fact, and commanding this centre by Da Costa. He was to play a big part in the actual battle back in 1814 with his assault on the centre of the French position. And over here we have a light infantry unit. But now see the number of light infantry troops available to the Portuguese are less than the British, which had five blocks in their light infantry unit, whereas these Portuguese light infantry have three blocks. And finally, let's take a look at our right. And this is quite a large force, again, over on the right wing of Portuguese. First of all, standing out like a sore thumb is the second artillery unit in the Allied army. They have only two artillery units. And again, it's horse artillery. This is British horse artillery with this Portuguese wing here. And the Portuguese wing is commanded by Buchan. And we have line infantry here with the officer and here. And here we have another section of light infantry. And at the rear, we have our only cavalry contingent in the whole of the Allied forces. And that's Portuguese cavalry here, where we have light cavalry and heavy cavalry. Ignore the tiles with bridges on, they make no difference whatsoever in this scenario to movement. So, that's our Allied Army set up and waiting. Now, so far we know that ahead of them they have a ridge. Where are the French?
and there they are, the French rearguard spread out on the crest in front of the Allied troops. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. Here we have the French right wing under the commander Viat, which basically consists of line infantry regulars here, here and here, along with a light unit, light infantry here, defending this crest line. And behind them is the only unit of French artillery in the game, and that is a unit of French foot artillery. The village here is called Seminary, I believe, and the town of Air itself will be just off around this position here. And indeed, along the north of the battlefield is a major river not shown on the battlefield. So now let's look at the French left. We have line infantry here, here, and here. Three more line infantry units completing the defense of the crest line. And the officer here, Arip. And completing his force, we have two infantry units here. Now these are militia. The French are gonna to have to be careful that these don't become easy victory banners for the allies. These are militia units, less capable, hence they're slightly refused here in the rear. And whereas we had the only artillery for the French over on the right, over here on the left, we have the only cavalry for the French. Having said that, these cavalry units here are more powerful, slightly outnumber the Portuguese cavalry in front of them. And here we have both heavy carbinier and light units here, who's ours. And there we are, all set up, ready to go. There they are, the forces arrayed before us. As I mentioned in the last video, we'll be using Richard Borg's Power of Three solo variant, which is very, very simple. You'll see how that works as we go along. For the Allies to win, they need to get six victory banners. For the French to win, they need to get six victory banners. Now, we receive victory banners by eliminating an enemy unit. So, this Portuguese unit here, they've been eliminated, and then in another combat, those last two get eliminated, that's a victory banner for the French, and the French need six victory banners. And they get victory banners for completely eliminating an enemy unit. For the British, it's exactly the same. However, it's possible for the British and Allies to get victory banners from geographical objectives as well, although that's going to be difficult. But that is, if they capture and are last to occupy this village here or this village here, each one is worth a victory banner for the Allied army. It's simple. Let's issue our cards. They have been shuffled. I'm just doing a final cut. Power of three means three cards. One, two, three. For the allies over there, one, two, three. For the French over here. I'm ready to go. Let battle commence. So let's go. Remember, while we're playing, that the board is divided into three sections. If you remember that, yeah? So you have two dotted lines. You've got a dotted line down here. So this is my left flank or the Allies' right flank. This is the centre because you've got another dotted line down here. Don't get the dotted lines mistaken with the folds in the board. <laughs> that would be too neat, wouldn't it? No. There's dotted lines there. So this is the right flank, for me the French, and left flank obviously for the British over there. So French left, centre and right, and the Allies left, centre and right. And that explains how the cards work. Let's go. 
it's the British first, the British and Allies to go first. Remember, each side for victory needs six victory banners. So let's take a look at the three cards available for the Allies. Probe center, attack right flank, and scout right flank. Okay, so now, because I'm playing both sides, I have to choose which one of these three, because it can only be one, will the Allies play. Let me have a look. Okay, so two of them are reference the right flanks. So that's here. A scout. So that means I can order one unit or leader on the flank. That's all, just one unit. But I can draw an extra command card next turn. Or attack. And I can attack with three, look. Three units from the right here. That could be good. Or probe centre. Two units and leaders in the centre. I won't take too much time over this. I'm going to, while I have the opportunity, attack right flank. I'm going to be aggressive. Okay. Three units can be ordered. Three units or leaders. So let's take a look. Now, I think the horse artillery will move. Now, this river is nothing more than a stream. Nothing, not even ankle deep. So units can move across it without too much impediment, except that when they move into a stream square, they have to stop their movement. Okay, here, if you can see it, there's a ford. And that ford means that the units can move through it without any impediment whatsoever. In other scenarios, this might be a proper river and will impede movement, but not here. It's a stream. So the horse artillery will move. And they will move and they have to stop there anyway. Although they have another movement they could have made. Because of the stream, they have to stop there anyway. So that's one unit. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm thinking the line infantry with the leader. There's the leader. He moves because he's with them as part of the unit. Dun, 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 dun. So what else should we do? Should we move? And they could only move one square anyway, don't forget, because they're line infantry. And okay, these line infantry as well, I think, move into the woods. Now, by the way, even if they had extra movement available, because they moved into woods, very much like the stream, they have to stop anyway. Okay, and that's all found, if I just reach over and grab it, on a really nice and easy terrain effects chart there, look. And each player gets one, and it's double-sided. So any modifications to uh, movement, or to melee, or to ranged fire, or anything like that, they're all on here, okay? So not bad. We've moved one, two, three units, the Portuguese, over here on the right flank. The right flank are advancing, come on, we've started. So that now gets discarded, okay? Oh, and by the way, just in case you're wondering, nobody is within ranged fire range, okay? So that's why we have moved and fired, for instance, just in case you're wondering. Anyway, so that now gets discarded. Take the two remaining cards, take a look. I think probe center is more useful than scout. Right flank, so we'll discard that one. Okay, we're saving this, aren't we? But we're also adding off the top of the deck two more cards. Don't know what they are. Think we can't play both sides? Of course we can. Fog of War. I've now no idea what's in that hand. That's the power of three. That's how it works. This has to be the most simple solo variation out there. Okay, so now we, the French, look, 
With the French, I think the French are really up against it here. This force, it's quite neat, you know, and quite well apportioned throughout the wings. My gosh, this is a heavy one actually over here. The British on the left flank. But anyway, uh, fairly thin, the French. It's a rear guard action. They don't stand much chance. So this is what I've got to be thinking of when we're playing this game. So let's have a look. Cavalry charge. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, that's a shame. That's cavalry charge. Here. Uh, issue an order to four or fewer cavalry or horse artillery units. And they can battle with one additional die for the entire turn. There's no point there. Okay. Uh, attack. Oh, attack left flank or attack center. Oh. Attack left flank or attack center. Each with three units. I might use it for my left, you know, and respond to this. If it was the center... Well, nobody's within range, okay. Oh, this is a difficult choice. Because I know this centre is quite vulnerable. There's no way I'm going to move them forward. The Allies are going to have to come to me. And there's no way we're moving off this ridge. Unless it's to the reverse slope. Think, think, think. I think the centre is one I'm going to save. But we'll come to that. Meanwhile... Attack left flank with up to three units, look. Yep, that's the one we're going to use. Now, three units. Heavy cavalry. I'm moving. It could move two, but not if he moves into a town. It's now only one. So my heavy cavalry is moving into that town. So that's one unit ordered. Light cavalry, one, two. Ha 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 ha, there we go. Let's just move them like that. They're forming up in line. Militia, when my heavy cavalry move out, I think that, oh no. I think I'll move the militia into that town and anchor them there. But meanwhile, leader, one, Two. Cool. That's three units stroke leaders have been moved. That card's been used. Good card. Discard the card. Save one. And I said I was going to save. Oh, should I? I'll save attack center. Okay. Discard the other. And add two cards. And I don't know what they are. Fog of War. Next turn. Oh, this is good. So let's see what the Allies have this turn. Probe Centre. Bombard. And Rally. Let's have a look. Rally. Roll battle dice equal to command. And for each single roll, one block of this type is returned to any understrength unit. Don't have any understrength units. So that will eventually be discarded. Bombard. I don't have any artillery in a position to bombard. Oh. No. We won't use bombard. Because really I don't have anyone in a decent position Almost here, but not quite because of the woods. Anyway, so we'll use for the Allies probe center. Issue an order to two units or leaders in the center. If you remember, this is the one we saved from last time. So we're still carrying out the plan for the Allies. We've got to be fair. Probe center. Issue an order to two units or leaders in the center. And those two units are going to be the light infantry are going to move into the woods. This is light infantry here. Just the kind of thing 
that they would do. I think that's quite a thematic move. Now, think, think, think. The next move, the woods here, I think we'll move this other line unit up simply because I want to keep this commander moving. Look at this. So we've basically got an advance here along the whole line. The Portuguese contingent seems determined to take the fight to the enemy. Just tidying up some of my terrain tiles here because it's one of those things. It's a shiny, slippy board and they just keep moving. So we used it, we discard it, we take the other two. Uh, one was Rally, wasn't it? And one was Bombard. We'll discard Rally, because bom Bombard could be useful fairly soon. So we'll discard Rally. And we'll add, yet again, some Fog of War. Two more cards. Okay, back to ourselves. What did we draw? Ta-da! See how quickly these moves go. So we've got attack center. Oh. Probe left flank. And we've still got cavalry charge. Probe left flank. Would order two units on our left. Or attack center. So, okay, I think we've made our decision. It's not going to be the center. It's going to be the left again. This time for two units, I can order two units. Do you know what? I could even be incredibly bold. No, not yet. I was thinking <laughs> of charging the horse artillery while it's midstream. No, not yet. It'd be silly. Move two units. Heavy cavalry. There's no restriction on moving out of a town. He moves one. Shall he take his other one? No. And this is where I wanted the militia for my second ordered unit to move towards this town here. Because I think eventually we might anchor the militia here uh, on this left flank in that little village. So that's been played. It gets discarded. We come over here again. I'm going to still keep cavalry charge. I've just got a feeling. Yeah. And attack center will be discarded. Draw two. Come on, guys. Keep going. And it's over here for the Allies' turn. But they've still got bombard. Recon in four. Oh, that's quite a good one, you know. So we've got bombard. So we knew about that. Or we've got Recon in Force. Now, that means we can order one unit or leader from each of our sections. Look, one, one, one. That might be worth it, you know. Or Probe on the right flank. Two units. I'm going to do that because I don't want to give up that opportunity. I want to probe the right, the right flank so I can order two units. Okay, okay, first thing I'm gonna do is get my horse artillery out of there. It's gonna move one and fire. Ho, 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 ho! Kaboomba! Against this heavy cavalry. We're out of the stream. We've spun around, we've unlimbered, and we ram some shot down that muzzle really quickly because we can see these cavalry forming up over here. That's the picture. Now, because it's moved, if it, if it was firing at four hex range, it actually can't do that because it moved. Its natural range is four. Because it moved, it would only be able to fire at range three, but it's perfectly okay. It's only range two. So it fires two battle dice. We're still using two battle dice. I wonder if you can see that there. So we're using two battle dice. We're firing against cavalry. So the result we're looking for is yellows. 
We will only get hits on yellows. Fire! Oh! One hit! Boom! First blood to the Allies. That heavy cavalry unit forming up was too much of a target. So the horse artillery quickly stopped, unlimbered, fired, bang, taken out of units from the heavy cavalry. Wow. Okay. Their second unit moving is... Dun, 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 dun. So, is, 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 is. The leader who just fell in the stream. And this, oops, line unit here who now can't move any further than the stream, because they have to stop. Continuing the advance. And also what I'm wanting to do is create a gap here for this cavalry to come through. So that's the second and last. So look what's happened. Look at this development here. Discard the card we used. Discard one of the others. We're going to retain Bombard. And hopefully I remember to use it next time. Get rid of the other one. And bang, down comes the fog of war again. So how do the French respond? Well, let's take a look. We've still got cavalry chart. Ah, French have got Bombard too. Probe right flank or cavalry charge. I definitely want to move something on the right flank here because I'm concerned that this artillery is useless. But then again, cavalry charge. That is so irresistible. Cavalry charge. We're going to charge the battery. And why are we going to do that? Because they're separated, look. They have no support. Issue an order to four or fewer cavalry. And we've got two. And ordered cavalry units will battle with one additional die for this entire turn. And in fact, ordered heavy cavalry may move three hexes and still battle. Oh, -ho! So I can order up to four cavalry units, and I have two cavalry units here. So there's only room for one to put in an attack. So which unit? Is it the light cavalry? Actually, you know, it could be. Charge! <laughs> Now, of course, if this was infantry here, they would be able to form square and hopefully we'll see that somewhere during the game. It's not. It's horse artillery. They're very vulnerable. And the French Hussars here would roll four, because they've got four blocks, dice in the melee. But they can roll an extra one because of the cavalry charge. They're going to roll five dice. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. And this time we're looking for the red artillery for a hit and sabers because it's melee for a hit. Let's go. Five dice. Come on. Oh, look. We have... Two artillery results and a sabers result because it's a melee and a retreat which we're not going to use because three are destroyed. They are totally destroyed. 
the horse artillery that crossed that river. They're unable to battle back because there's nobody left. And the light cavalry, because of their impetus, follow up and take ground. Kel un result. And of course, they've eliminated an enemy unit. So the French win the first battle flag. Battle flag number one out of six, which we'll put over here. So the French are leading one victory banner to nil. Amazing. Okay. Who'd have thought that? Just complete the issue of more order cards. And there's the Allies. How are the Allies going to respond? We still have Bombard, Flank Attack, two units or leaders on each flank. See that? Oh, or attack center. We won't be using bombard. We'll go with flank attack. Two units on each flank. First of all, the light cavalry of the Portuguese contingent will move. Two, the heavy cavalry will move. Two. So that's the two units on this flank. Now on this flank, finally, the British contingent is gonna start their move with the light infantry. Here we go. Followed by this line unit here. So both flanks are now moving. We discard it. I'm going to move these cards a bit quicker now. We'll discard Bombard. We'll keep attack center. We'll issue two new cards. And it's the French response. Probe right flank, assault right flank, fire and hold. Won't use fire and hold because no one's in range yet. The range of these muskets is two. Assault right flank or probe right flank. So it's basically two units or many more units. We're going to use assault right flank now. For the assault right flank, you use as many cards as you, you can move as many or order as many units as you have cards issued to you. And the French would have had five command cards if we weren't playing the power of three. So that's what you refer to. In the scenario pack, how many original command cards would the French have had? They'd have had five. So we can order up to five units on our right flank. It's called assault right flank. And we certainly have four. Let me show you. The first thing I want to do is order this unit to move to the side. That's one unit and I can move five. I know we don't have five. Finally, the foot artillery are being manhandled to the brow of this crest. That's two units. A third will be this. One, two, three. Our officer is going right out to the flank. Now he, the officer, was sitting on the dotted line, the dividing line between centre and right. Because of that, he can be ordered within any of these two wings, centre or right. 
we placed it in that one. So that's how that one works. We could have ordered up to five because that's the original scenario instructions. But as it was, we made three moves anyway. Discard that. Keep that. Discard that. Issue two more. Okay, what are the British going to do? Or the Portuguese allies? Attack center, there's that card again. Forward! They're going to use this one. Two units in every single, in all of the three wings. Forward. This unit is also going to attempt to fire. It's moved one and it's going to fire. So it halves its number, which is four blocks down to two and it would round up if it was a fraction. So it's gonna fire two against, and we're in range, one, two, musket fire against this line here. Let's go. And it's looking for ranged fire but for blue infantry results with two dice nothing oh we got a retreat retreat one now this is how that works so they rolled one flag so this unit has to retreat one hex now if there was another unit here in other words it was supported by two of its own friendly units, it could ignore that one flag, but it can't, it's only supported by one, it has to fall back. Good result for the Portuguese. And on this side, two units. These line infantry here, and these line infantry here. Big change in the battlefield this turn. Dispose of that card. And the French are ready to reply. Let's take a look. Probe right flank, two units this side. Probe right flank, two units this side. Scout right flank, one unit. So. We're going to have to use probe right flank. So I can order two units this side. And certainly one of them is going to be the foot artillery who can now fire from this crest. And they're going to fire on the extreme left of the British line. These line infantry in the stream here. One, two, range, three hexes away. Okay. So that will be two dice for the French to roll at range three hexes. Oh, if only they were a bit closer. Okay. And because we're firing at infantry, again, we're looking for the blue infantry symbol. Let's go. Artillery fire. Boom. Well done, that has weakened that unit. Outnumbered as the French are, they're giving the Allies a bloody nose. Now, I have one command left for this. There's nobody in musketry range, because it's two hexes. We'll stay as we are. Okay, discard that. Uh, keep pro right flank. Let's get rid of that. Let's take two. Now you see how quickly this game is moving now. 
This is so low play, but I'm having, I mean, genuinely so much fun. <laughs> and I don't know how it's going to turn out. Let's go. It's the Allies' turn. We have attack centre, of course. Oh, two of them now. Attack centre or assault left flank. Oh, this is the most powerful card. Assault left flank for the Allies. This is going to be a big move for the British contingent commanded by Stuart over there. So the British started off in the scenario setup with six cards. So we can order up to six units on the British left flank. Wow. We're going. Big unit moving into the woods. That's one of the six units. And they're going to fire. They've only moved one and they're going to fire. They've moved, halved the number of units because they moved. So that's 2.5. Rounded up is three. They'll use three battle dice. Three battle dice. But because that British infantry, part of the asymmetry is in musketry fire, you plus one. So they're actually now going to use four battle dice. And they're going to fire at this unit here. So they're looking for the infantry symbol. Let's go. Four die. Let's move that there. Hopefully you can see this. It's a bit difficult to get everything in, and look! Three infantry battle dots. Bang! 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 Oh, that was a deadly, that was withering fire from the light infantry in the woods. Because the leader was with them, we have to check, because of all those casualties, if the leader became a casualty. So we take two dice. Okay, it's only a small chance, but two dice. If you roll two sabres, the leader is dead. He's been shot. Let's go. We have to do this. Two dice. No, we rolled one sabre, but the other one's a yellow cavalry symbol. He survived. That was a deadly attack for our first move over here. We've got plenty more to do. Let's go. Line infantry. One. And they're going to fire three blocks. And because they moved, halved is one and a half. Rounded up to two, and British infantry get one extra dice, three dice, and we're firing against this unit. Let's go again. This is a withering attack on the French right flank. Oh. Bang. There it is. There's the result. The final one. French infantry is a goner. That means the British now earn their first victory banner. I'll place it there. So there's one victory banner each. Check to see if the officer was a casualty. We're looking for two sabres. Oh, and again, we had one sabre. So again, the officer survives. Whoa. Okay, we can still use, uh, make more moves. What 
that's a big move for the British over here. Discard. Uh, both are attack centre, so we'll discard one of those. Draw two cards. What a move! Devastating. Okay, vive la France, probe right flank, maybe. Force march, issue an order to all infantry units in one section. No. Ah, oh, force march, we're not gonna come off this crest, that would be silly, wouldn't it? I'm just looking, yeah. So that's not good. We're gonna go right flank again, probe right flank, order two units. The first thing we're going to do is get our officer out of dodge. One, two, three. Good move. Oh no, look how exposed our artillery are. And we're going to fire for our second order on this unit here. Bang! Oh! So standing fire at two hex range is. Three dice for the old artillery there. So let's get our trusty dice tray back. Three dice. And again, we're firing at infantry, so we're looking for blue infantry symbols with three dice. Come on, be lucky, guys. Fire! <laughs> Devastating. The French roll two. Infantry. One, two casualties. Boom. That's heavy for the Brits over there. Well done. That was a good move. But by golly, we're really exposed, the French, here over on the right flank. Discard. Discard. Take two more. One, two. How will the British counter this time? What's going to happen now? We've got cavalry charge. Oh, okay. Uh, probe centre or attack centre. It's going to be attack centre or cavalry charge. Now, this is that one where they can charge and add a die. Problem is, here's my cavalry. I don't like the idea of sitting in that stream without checking in the rules. I don't know what difference that's going to make if I turn that into a charge. I'm not sure. I could look it up. But instead, I'm going with attack centre. So, up to three units in the centre. I'm going to start to bring these into line for the first unit. One move there into the woods so my second move is here no yes and my third move is here a melee they're now on the same level and they're both on the plateau of this crest line here. And we've got four line units against these French infantry. Four blocks, it's just a straight four dice. Here we go. And any French left in this square are still going to be able to battle back. This is melee. Here we go, four dice. For the Portuguese. Goodness me. Look at that. Three infantry results and a retreat. So this is what happens. One, two, three and a retreat. And they now take ground. 
There's no battling back because there was no one left in that square. Good grief. What a huge result for the Portuguese in the center. I'm not sure how the French will respond to this. Let's just dish out the cards. There we go, now back to three cards. Let's go, let's have a look. Scout center, not really much good. Assault center, possible. Or give them cold steel. Issue an order to all units adjacent to the enemy. Ordered units may melee with one additional die. Wow. That was so devastating. We're going to have to play it. And I'll tell you why. Look how we've been, they're crashing straight through our centre here. They're going to divide and conquer if we're not careful, particularly here on this side. We have to do something about these Portuguese that have invaded the centre of our line. All units adjacent are now included in this melee. So first of all, we take these guys, four blocks, but they roll an additional dice. This is where the French are stronger now, in melee, rather than ranged combat. So we're gonna roll five dice for the French in melee here. Let's go. Give them the cold steel, guys. They don't like it up them. What have we got? Oh, 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 okay, okay. Now, look at the result. We have two infantry kills and another one, because we've got cross sword because it's melee, so that's three. Plus, we have a flag of retreat. But if we want to, the Portuguese can ignore that retreat flag because they've got an officer with them. But first of all, the three casualties. Oh, this has been a bloody meeting on the crest of this hill. We can ignore that retreat flag. But we don't have to. And it would be silly. No, nope. they're going to retreat that one square back there. So they've got mutual support here. Whoa, what? A fight indeed. And what a response from the French. Actually, you know, that was quite realistic. <laughs> the Portuguese finally take the hill with a devastating result, let's face it. But now that blown and from their flank comes a charge from the French infantry. So they've suffered badly. Wow. <laughs> What a turn. Okay, what should we keep? We'll keep Assault Centre. And we'll renew the Fog of War. So now what? I don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, let's have a look at the Allied response. Probe Centre, Probe Centre or Leadership. Issue an order to all leaders. When a leader is attached to a unit, the unit is also ordered. Any ordered unit shall roll one additional die if in battles. No, we're okay. It's going to be probe center. So it looks like they're trying to keep up the momentum in the center here. Two units. I'm going to go one unit. And melee. Okay. So we've got a melee here. And as we know, the Portuguese are going to roll four dice, four blocks, four dice. They don't get any extras. But the French will, as long as they get a chance to battle back. Come on. Again, we're looking for blue infantry results. 
Oh! Uh, okay. No? Yes? We got retreat twice. The yellow doesn't count. And one melee result. Cross swords. This is what happens. There's the one melee result. And two retreats. If there was another French unit in support here, they could ignore one of those two retreat flags. But meanwhile, there are two retreat flags and it has to be back towards your side of the board. So we have to go one, two. There's no option there at all. And the Portuguese are going to take ground. Whoa, what a result. And for our second unit, it's going to be these guys are going to come down off the hill. Like so. Discretion being the better part of valour. Okay, what do we keep? We'll keep pro centre again. We'll take that away. We'll refresh the cards. Like so. Okay, France, assault center, probe right flank, attack left flank. What could we do on the left flank? Maybe quite a bit, you know. Okay, or assault center. There's not all that many troops in the center. Or probe right flank. We're going to go attack left flank. All right. Now the left flank is left of this dotted line. Here's the dotted line here. Hmm, so it doesn't include these units. Here's our attack. Melee. French line get an extra dice in melee, so instead of four dice, for four blocks, it's five. Now, come on, surely this could be devastating once again for the Portuguese unit at the top of that hill. Five dice. And we're looking for cross sabres, because it's melee, or blue infantry results. Here we go. Oh, not bad. Not brilliant, but not bad. One of them was a retreat. And we have a blue infantry result. That's one kill. Cross sabers. That's two kills. And one retreat. Two kills. One retreat. There, I think. I was going to go there. It could be either of those two squares, but that one would still be in danger. Now, the French have decided not to take ground. They'll stay as they are. Or could we close up? No, 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 we won't. We can still move or order two more units. One will be light cavalry. One more move. This militia unit to plug this gap just a little. They are now moved right onto the dotted line, so they're both left flank or centre. Okay, uh, could have been better. There was no battling back, of course, because the unit had to retreat. The French certainly took some casualties off the Portuguese, but my goodness. I think the French are just about done for. Okay. Uh, we'll keep. Probe right flank. How are the allies going to respond? This is what we've got. Probe left flank, 
probe centre, probe centre. I think the Portuguese decided that they no longer want to engage in melee. <laughs> so, yeah, probe centre to order two units. Oh, hang on. One was probe left flank, which is over there. Wow. No, we'll wait. We'll still go centre. That card can be saved, for instance. So, first thing I want to do, because I can order two units. First thing I want to do is move these guys off the crest. You cannot combine units, by the way, in order to stop a unit being eliminated, for instance. These units are still very, very damaged. So, uh, for the second unit to order, I'm going to order this unit here to open fire onto this crest line. Okay, so that's four blocks. And once again, it's nice and simple with the Portuguese. Four blocks, four dice. Here's the four dice. We're firing against infantry here on this crest line. So we're looking for blue infantry die results. Here we go. And we have one. That's the result, look. You see, it's not melee, so the cross swords don't count. But the blue soldier, the blue infantry die does. So one of those is a casualty. Pretty good. Not bad. Ranged fire, two hexes distant. Because a casualty has been taken, we do, we must remember this, to check for leader casualty. So if we get two cross sabers, and we don't, we get one. So the leader is still okay. Replace the cards, again, fog of war. Don't know what's happening now. Let's look at the French. What are we gonna do about this center? Uh, probe right flank. Leadership, no, I don't want that. Coordinated advance. One on each wing and two in the center. Let's have a go. Coordinated advance. Now it said two in the center, didn't it? So, this militia unit, I know it's vulnerable, I know. And for the second one in the centre, this line infantry unit, we're just plugging that gap a little bit. I don't think the Portuguese are in the mood to take on the French in melee again. We'll see. So that was one on the left of the militia unit. We've done one in the centre there. Let's do another in the centre here. So that's the two in the centre. Okay, and one over on the right flank. Now, I think this is going to be artillery because we want another battle flag. Yes, artillery, foot artillery against the remnants of that unit there. Quickest way to get a battle flag. Yeah. So two hex distance, that's three die. And all we need is just one of those blue infantry results. Come on, let's get another battle flag. No! We didn't. We had a saber for this one melee. We had a cavalry, but we did get one retreat. But they don't have to retreat because they're supported by two of the adjacent units. However, again, discretion, they will take the retreat. So that bit has done the French no good at all. It's actually put that vulnerable unit round the corner out of the way, uh, which is what I didn't really want to happen. So, there's our two cards, but we're tidied up here a little bit. And it's the Allies go. 
So let's take a look at the options that the Allies have this turn. They have probe left flank. Uh, okay, here for two units. Ass oh, assault left flank with the number of starting command cards. So that's six or attack center. Uh, assault left flank is where we're going with that one. Okay. Assault left flank. So here's the dotted line. So everyone here in the British brigades are on the British left flank or on the dotted line. So, six units, gosh. So it's a case of what order to do it in, really. You see, why assault when we're better at ranged fire? Okay, so, first unit, this contingent here, ranged fire, it'll be five die, because they get an extra one being British line infantry. Five die at this unit here. Let's go. Here's the five die, and they're looking at the blue infantry. Fire! Not a thing. Look at that for a result. We've had some great results, and now we've had a really poor result, except there's one retreat flag. There's no officer with them. They've not got support of two units, so they must do that retreat. Off they go, straight to the rear. That's the only place they can go. Whoops. Okay, so that's one line infantry. That's two units. Third unit will be this one here. We'll fire at this one here. They haven't moved, it's standing fire. Five plus the extra. Six die at this unit here. Wow. Let's go. Here. Fire! Wow. Okay. We have... We can ignore those and ignore that. We have two kills and a retreat die. So, one, two, he can ignore the retreat die because there's a leader there, or do they take it and go behind the hill? They'll stay where they are. Okay, we have to check for a leader casualty, him, and we're fine. Okay, now the reason they're staying where they are, if they go behind the hill, they would only end up meleeing uphill once the Brits get to the top. So yeah, okay. So we've had one, two, three units out of six. What's next? I think that's four. That's five. And the horse artillery will move two. Okay. Come on, the French. Probe right flank. Attack left flank or recon in force one of each. We'll try recon in force one from each section because over here I think it's a no brainer artillery and we will fire 
just too distant at this unit here, yes. So, they will use three die. Here we are. Let's go. The guns are opening up. <clears throat> That's a tough one. Let's check for the leader casualty. And nothing. Okay. Wow. So that was that one. We can have one from the center. This may seem like madness, but bear with me. This line infantry charging downhill into melee. They get four plus one, five in melee against this unit here. You can see what I'm trying to do now. Okay, five. Oh, look at that. That's five hits, melee and four blue. Gone. That's another victory banner. For the French, they now have two. And they will not follow up. Now, finally, on this wing here, my light cavalry is just dressing back one square. And that's it. And it's the British turn. They've still got probe left flank, probe left flank, or coordinated advance. One, two, one. They don't want to let up on the left flank. That was my plan for them. So they're going again. But this time it's only two units because it's a probe. Probe on the left flank. What are they going to do now? The horse artillery here for one of the two moves is gonna do standing fire against this unit here. I've just looked at it carefully. The hill here runs down the hex side, so it doesn't obscure the shot. If there was one on the other side as well, it would. But they have a clear shot at one, two hex range. And we're looking for the red artillery symbol as a result like that one there. This is a long shot. Okay. Oh, dear, oh dear. Got one. One kill. Boo. Okay. Fair enough. Now, the next one is critical. Can't use these because they're now in the center. Here we go. Light infantry moving one and they'll battle uphill to melee the French. Now, because it's uphill, they get minus one block. So instead of five blocks in melee, they have four. The French get two blocks plus an additional one because that's how they melee. So it's four versus three. With the British going first, let's get, oh, let me keep that down there. Melee, they have three blocks. No, how many blocks? Five minus what? So they have four. Four blocks. Here we go. Two kills. Two infantry kills. Bang, bang. So they too now get another victory banner. It's two all with the victory banners. Check for a leader casualty. No. Now, as soon as the leader's last block is eliminated like that, the leader must retreat one, two, or three hexes. Must. Now, 
How many hexes he retreats is up to him. I could, for instance, go one, two and retreat him off the board so that he doesn't become an easy victory banner for the opponent. But then he can't take any further part in the battle. So do I do that or do I retreat him one to this unit here? And I think that's what we'll do. However, the British Light Infantry will follow up to take ground like so. They've made it to the top of the crest. What a devastating move. Okay, so probe left flank, coordinated advance. We'll keep probe left flank in case the British can keep up the pressure over here. Issue two new cards like so. And now it's the French turn. Let's take a look. What are we going to do? Attack left flank, attack right flank. Ah. Oh. I'd like to use the Grand Manoeuvre, the big manoeuvre or the great manoeuvre, but in doing so, you can make some good movement, but you can't battle. Uh, so we'll go attack right flank with up to three units. So this is what we're going to do. Maybe it's obvious. But this is what we're going to do. I've just realized the position that that British Light Regiment is in. I have a feeling what you're about to see now is pretty devastating. And it's quite possible that that unit may no longer exist. <laughs> but I'm glad it's happened because what we're going to do is a combined arms attack. This is how realistic it is. It would happen, right? The French infantry here, about just on the border, the dotted line, are gonna melee assault this unit as they come over the brow. So the light infantry charged up here, cleared the crest entirely came over the crest only to find the French in depth. The French are going to charge uphill admittedly the British and at the same time it's going to be a combined arms assault because the artillery will also open fire while these guys are all in the gaggle. Combined arms attack. Now, this is how it happens. This would be, because it's French, not four blocks, but five in melee. But it's uphill, so we've got to reduce one, so that's four. The artillery, at point blank range, use four battle dice. That's eight dice. And why do combined arms? Because with the combined arms rule, because they're being meleeed at the same time, both the infantry symbol and the sabers will count as kills for all eight of the dice. I've got a feeling that this will be the end of that light regiment. Okay, here we go. Oh, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six kills. And a retreat, which obviously isn't going to be used. Six kills, they're completely wiped out. And the French will advance after combat and retake the ground. What an appalling loss of life. 
Let's get ready to go again. And it's the British Allied turn. And it's another victory banner for the French. They now have three of the six they require. It's 3-2 and it's the British Allied turn. <laughs> 